Hi, so today we're going to learn how to do a blast search and also how to do sequence alignments. So all going to be done through the Uniprobe database. So we go there just like we did last week. And we're going to pull out a sequence of a protein and see what else is out there that might be similar to it. So the particular protein we'll look at is one that we actually study in this lab. It's a flavohemoglobin from the parasitic protus jardia. And here's the results of it. The one that we're in interested in is the top one. So we just select it. And notice when we select it, this button becomes live, this blast button. That allows us to search against different databases. The default is to search against the entire protein sequence database in here. But we're going to do a restricted search uh, just against the limited database of only those proteins that have known structures. So we click on the blast button and we're going to use the advanced search. Click on go and we're interested in, in the bottom left here, the target database. We're going to change that from the entire uh, list of protein sequences that are known there, which is you known numbers into hundreds of thousands of sequences. Now you can restrict your search by species, so you can just search for similar proteins within particular species. The most common ones are here. If you scroll down then, you get this other option where it just searches against sequences uh, that uh, are attached to proteins of known structures. So that's what we're going to do now. So we click on that button, and now we can run our BLAST search. Since we're not searching the entire sequence database, but only those with known structures, it won't take us that long to accomplish. So it should be finished in about 30 seconds or so. And then we'll uh, see our results. And here we go. So 15 seconds, that's not bad. Uh, what it lists then is in decreasing order of similarity, uh, the protein sequences that are retrieved. So what we see the highest match then is another flavoheme protein uh, this time from the bacteria E. coli and a list of other uh, bacterial proteins as well too that shows some uh, level of sequence identity to our protein sequence. And so at the, top, uh, the uh, right hand side you can see the level of identity. So 38% for the E. coli protein and comparable amounts for the next three which is actually quite high. This is also color coded too. So if you notice these bars here the green bar indicates roughly 40% identity and this allows you to look at a glance and see how similar uh, these uh, protein sequences that you retrieve are to the protein sequence that uh, you queried with. So for example, if you had a list, say, of several hundred, you could scroll through and see at a glance then which ones had the highest level of identity, because they'd be red, and the ones with the lowest level, they would tend towards uh, the blue. And we can actually see that if, for example, we show all 28 uh, sequences, we scroll down here, we look along the right-hand side, and it shows us uh, decreasing levels of sequence identity by the change in color. We also notice in some cases here that the level of sequence uh, similarity does not extend across the whole protein sequence. So our protein is about 400 residues long, and what this is showing then is where you have the match. And if you don't have an exact match across the whole sequence, it's going to be shown by these little truncated bars here at different positions. What that indicates then is that uh, the query protein, the chart of flavohemoglobin, is not entirely um, homologous uh, to what you retrieve, but it does share a domain. So what you see here then with these ones further on down is that they're not similar across the whole sequence. They just match in a particular region where they happen to share uh, a similar domain. So we'll go back up to the top now, and we'll collapse the table. Now below the, um, the list of uh, sequences that were retrieved, there's also pairwise alignments. And then you can see um, the comparison then between the query sequence, the Giardia flavohemoglobin, which, which was indicated by the, red bar, uh, the, the black bar. And below that is uh, where the sequence matches for the, the top one in the, uh, that's retrieved. Uh, the E. coli protein. So if you clicked on uh, the view alignment, you would see the results of the pairwise alignment. So this would show you then 
for the uh, Giardia protein and the E. coli protein match up. Giardia protein is in the top, the uh, match is in the middle, and the E. coli pro uh, protein sequence is in the bottom. Where there's an exact match, we'll show you the residue. So we're looking at this uh, middle uh, bar here, and you can see that you know, they, they share the same residue here. There's a leucine, threonine there. If you see a positive uh, sign, that it indicates a similar residue. So if you look there, where that first positive sign is, in the uh, Giardia protein, you have a leucine, and that uh, has an isoleucine in the E. coli sequence. So at a glance, then again, you can tell where these sequences match up. You can also see where gaps are. We see these dotted lines here in the E. coli sequence. Uh, that means that there's extra sequence present in the Giardia protein. So that's a pairwise alignment. If we go back to the previous screen, though, we can do multiple sequence alignments. What we do here is we go down to uh, the alignments part of the screen and click on the bar next to the query. That's our Giardia protein. Click on, say, the next three down, the E. coli, the other bacterial one, and say that from, uh, the one from Vibrio cholera. Now that we've selected these four sequences, we can now do an alignment of those. And this is a multiple sequence alignment because we're aligning more than two sequences. And this can be very useful then in seeing where, in a family of uh, similar proteins, uh, where the parts are that are highly conserved and where there's lots of variability. So if we click on this, this line button, this will take a little bit of time now as it tries to align these sequences to each other. And here's the results of our alignment. So at the very top, we're going to have the Giardia protein sequence, our query sequence. And below that, we've had as many of those sequences that we selected to do the, that multiple sequence alignment. Now, in this case, the lowest line is informative. Where you've got an asterisk, that's where there's an exact match among all the sequences. Where there's similar residues, you have colons. And where there's somewhat similar residues, for example, here, uh, where the period is, those are residues that, say, are not exactly um, similar to each other, but they do share similar properties. So, for example, E is the glutamic acid residue, which is charged. And at that position in one of the other proteins, you've got a K. It's got a different charge, but it's also a charged residue. So these would be, like, generally hydrophilic residues at that position there. So again, at a glance, this can show you where the uh, protein sequences in the alignment have exact matches, uh, the regions that are highly conserved uh, and don't, do not vary much from one sequence to another one. And again, you can also see where certain proteins have uh, extra sequences, inserts in them, that other protein sequences lack. And actually, uh, in my own case, uh, that's one of the things we're really interested in, is why the Giardia protein, say, has extra sequence indicated by this part here, and also that part down there, why it has those, and the other ones don't. Now, what you would oftentimes want to do is save this alignment. So typically, you want to download it, and you, then you can put it into, say, like a uh, Word or something like that. So if you click on the Download button, you can download it as uncompressed. That would just be plain text. Hit Go. And here you have it. Uh, what you do then is you just select the whole thing. This is a bit crude. You just copy it, open up uh, Word, for example, and paste it. Now, it does require some manipulation. Uh, it is important to use a, a proportional font. So what you would do is make sure that the font is Courier or Courier New. and also to change the font size uh, to uh, eight or nine. Otherwise, you don't get the alignment working here. So you can see here, this is our alignment, but it doesn't look very aligned right now. If we change the font size to eight, suddenly it does align, and there would be the proper aligned uh, sequence that you would need, say, for your assignment that's coming up. So this is basically the essence of how uh, one does uh, a BLAST search and a multiple sequence alignment, and of course, uh, what you do with it is um, your business in the future, but it is a very, very handy research tool 
it's something we introduce in this course, but its use actually becomes um, more apparent uh, the more you uh, follow your career in the biosciences. So thank you very much, and that's it.